so I dropped the last part. But basically what we are going to do is to implement a, a multiplayer web game using streams as building blocks. So who knows uh, what streams are? And I'm not talking about Java 8 streams. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, so there will be lots of uh, code snippets and diagrams uh, during the presentation. So whenever you feel something's unclear, just please ask, ask your question. Let's prepare the battlefield. So what are the streams? There are four things I want to share with you about that. So the first um, uh, most important thing is that there are another way of defining application logic, a different way. And it's also a concurrency model. So from the four concurrency models that you can see on the slides, this one is the most abstract. And uh, it's uh, different and abstract in a way that uh, you are focusing only on data transformations. So you just have an element, and then you have your piece of code, basically a function, we just transforms it, it, it into a different element. And uh, this helps us, uh, the programmers, fight with the most, uh, our, our the worst en enemy. This is the time. So uh, whenever you're programming using streams, uh, what, you, what you focus on is not what just happened or what will happen next. You are focusing on, on what is happening right now, on what happens right now. And uh, this way, uh, we, can, we can say that the time is uh, explicitly specif specified inside the stream. So what you see here is the diagram I will use uh, throughout the presentation. So basically time flows from left to right and those circles are the elements. And so the right outmost element is, is the oldest one. This all means that we are becoming declarative programmers. So not functional yet, but, but declarative, right? So we are programming using descriptions of transformations, not the uh, prescriptions of the whole algorithm like in the uh, imperative world. Uh, so we are, yeah, we are more sane in this way because we are using pure functions more frequently. So what's inside uh, this talk? I will just uh, explain the concepts behind front-end application. The code itself or the longer version of the talk includes some JavaScript, uh, JavaScript snippets of the real implementation because it's very, very short and concise, but uh, right now we are go, go through the concepts alone, and then we move to the Scala part, which is the backend server for the multiplayer snake game, and uh, yeah, we'll go through concepts and code, and then there will be live demo. Okay, the, let's meet the main characters for today. Uh, the, the, sh the great thing is the board. Uh, the, the green square right there is a snake, just one square, and the uh, fruit is a, is a green green square. And uh, this is our first stream. So this is a stream of empty objects which are output each uh, every 100 milliseconds. So yeah, th this is called the tick stream. So this is our first stream. It does just that. What we can do with that is that we can create a new stream out of it. And all the streams that we create are immutable. So we can take this tick stream which is at the top, then map using the function which is provided and then we get a, a, a new immutable stream out of it. We will call it direction stream because it will output the, the, a new direction of the snake, should, the direction the snake should take next. And as you see, uh, we are mapping with a function that always returns vector 0, 1. So what we get as the output stream is that is a 0, 1 vector output uh, every 100 milliseconds. We can then use this direction stream in order to create our, our snake's head position stream. Uh, we can use a second of six operators I want to use today. Um, that is called scan. And uh, what scan does, you probably know that, but I'll just explain very quickly. So it accumulates a value, right? Using the function that we provide. So this is the second line of the operator. It starts with a vector 0, 0. So this is like the starting position. And then we accumulate the position using the just a vector addition uh, operator. So every time there is a new uh, element, a new vector 0, 1, new direction in the input stream, which is direction stream, then we just accumulate it inside uh, our new output stream. And uh, each time this accumulator, accumulator changes, we just output it. So the, uh, bottom, the bottom stream is snake's head's position. Cool? So this is what we have right now. Zero, one means that we always go down, right? And uh, this is not the game because there's no 
uh, there's no input, so we can't really play the game yet. So this is how it looks right now. So let's change it, right? Let's introduce a new stream, which will be a key presses stream. Each time the user presses a, a button on the keyboard, there is an object in the stream, uh, and it will hold a keyboard event. What we can do with that is that we can filter it, of course, and we will create a left key press left key presses stream. So uh, what it does, it just filters out all key presses that are not the left key press, and that leaves us with just left key presses. Each time the user presses left key, we'll have an, a value here in the left key presses stream. So similarly, similarly, we can do it with the right key presses. And uh, what we can do next is we can map again uh, left, left rotation stream is the stream we'll get after uh, applying a map to the key presses. So again, the top stream is uh, uh, whenever user presses left key, he has a value, and uh, then each value in this key presses stream is mapped to a rotate left function. So we have a stream of functions right now. What it, uh, what it allows us to do, or to think about, when you think about it, whenever user presses a left key, we have a function here that we need to use in order to transform the current direction. And, and here's the question. Uh, the question is, is it synchronized with the ticks? Uh, no, it is not, because when you look at the source of all the events, the source of the events is just user pressing the key, the key right? And this is a very good question, but we'll, uh, in, in a few slides it will all be solved. But yeah, you, you, you see, you've seen the problem just, just before I wanted, it, I wanted you to see it. <laughs> uh, very cool, uh, thank you. OK, so once again, every time a user presses a button, we have a function, rotate left function, output in, in the output stream, left rotation stream. Similarly, we can do it with right rotations, and we can merge them. So we can merge those two streams in order to get a, a new one. What this new one will output uh, is uh, each time one of those top two input streams outputs a value, uh, it's also at, uh, it, it also appears in the uh, in the action stream, in the uh, output stream, which we'll call action stream, okay? Uh, so what is action stream? When you think about it uh, deeply, uh, whenever users want to change the direction, the action stream will con contain a function that we need to use in order to transform the current direction. So this is where we got, where we got right? So that's very cool stuff. And uh, yeah. So this is our new direction stream. The old one, you, when you remember, was just 0, 1, each 100 millisecond, milliseconds. And this one is just, uh, yeah, each time user presses something, the direction changes. And uh, uh, yeah, the scan is just scanning through, uh, scanning through the object of the, of the input stream with the accumulator value, initial accumulator, uh, accumulator, acc accumulator value 0, 1. So 0, 1 is our initial direction, and then we just accumulate functions, so applying to the, di the current direction and outputting it to the output stream, which is, uh, which is the down one. Any questions? The question is, our events are sequenced? Uh, I'm saying events are not necessarily So the question is about the merge, merging two streams and the sequence between them. So when, when, I, when they are very, very close and probably they are, as the source of them are from like this different uh, asynchronous systems, uh, you probably don't have any sequencing. But if it's one system that provides those events, it, you probably have some sequencing. But this, the, the, those, those kind of uh, race conditions are not really uh, important right, right here. Because when user presses it so fast, that the, the key is so fast that he even doesn't know about that, then the, you know, the result is not uh, uh, known to us. So it, it will eventually uh, be stable after some time, right? The whatever, whatever user presses, the pattern the user presses is not important, but it will uh, stabilize over time. 
in this game. But the, all, but, uh, the question is very good because in your own business logic, you need to think about uh, where, when, where those events coming from, right? Excuse me, I didn't get that. So, so if you have a snake going through your main system, yeah. right? then you would sort of miss it too much easily, right? Because you don't want it to be tracked. Or like say you get like many bubbles. So I think it was it was one person saying like if you're inclined to play stupid or something like that, then it can definitely be fixed. Yeah, but if you are going through a maze, you won't be doing, uh, you know, smashing buttons randomly, right? So the so the race conditions will not be there. So this is the only source of, of the events here. So it's just a user pressing buttons. So uh, the sequence of the buttons will eventually get there. Yep. And another question. So, so your original keyboard event stream is presumably sequenced. Yeah. What are the implications of not filtering the left and right events individually? It's, uh, there's no difference. There's no real difference. So it, it basically, the, whatever the stream library you are using, for example, for example, in Akka streams, this is uh, uh, this is JavaScript. But in Akka streams, uh, the stages are using the same thread, for example, by default. And when you don't want them to use one thread, you need to put dot async everywhere in order to put them on different threads. Then. This is, so this is done intentionally, right? right? But, but the whole one pipeline is done in one thread, so there's the sequence is there. So, so, so it doesn't matter whether you put everything in one operator or you split them in uh, different operators because it will be done sequentially in one thread. Okay. Yep. And uh, another question? Yeah. Yep. So the only guarantee, yeah. So uh, the question was, what we, what the guarantee, the delivery guarantee, do we have in Aka streams, comparing, for, ordering. Uh, yeah, ordering. So basically, the only guarantee you get, like generally speaking, is that if you have, uh, if you have uh, parallel, parallel pipelines, right, free parallel pi pipelines, and all, all those pipelines have stages. You, you know that uh, this stage will finish before the next one, and that's all. Okay. So that's the problem you mentioned. What we need to do, so the, the current situation is that every time user presses a button, uh, the direction changes and the snake doesn't move at all because we don't, we don't really do that, right? We need to uh, make ticks uh, make ticks again used inside the inside the streams inside our streams in order for the snake to move even though player isn't pressing any buttons right so I just change a direction and I want snake to move along uh, this direction until I change it again so uh, that's why we uh, use sampled by operator which just uh, it takes two streams as an input and the top stream is a value stream, and the bottom st stream is a uh, sampling stream, right? Each time there is a, a value in the sampling stream here, we take the last value from the value stream and output it uh, in, in the output stream of the whole operate, sampled by operator. And this is our real new direction stream. Uh, so this doesn't have this problem right now. Right? And the, the other thing worth mentioning is that we don't really need to change snake head positions because it, it, it's just using a new direction stream and nothing more should change here. So the current implementation is like that. So we have uh, a head going in the direction that user wants. We use 10 streams and five operators. So let's make uh, the snake bigger. What we can do is we can do another operator. Uh, it's called sliding window. What sliding window does, it just takes uh, last n, in this case two, last n elements from the input stream and just outputs it uh, as an array. 
And uh, the second uh, quick win we can do is a fruit eaten event. So the top, uh, the top stream is a head snake position, uh, snake hate position, and uh, whenever the, the head of the snake is uh, position is the same as a fruit, uh, we have a value in the bottom stream, which we'll call fruit eaten events. So very quick uh, way to do it eaten events, right? So we have something like that right now. Uh, so user can control the snake uh, with just those 11 streams, and uh, a fruit eaten event can generate a new fruit. So the ar architecture of the fl of, of the stream based application can be uh, can be pictured as a flow. So all the things I mentioned are uh, right here on this picture, and the two streams on the left are input streams, right? The only, th those are the streams which are based on outside world values. Ticks are based on the clock, which is an outside world value, and keys is uh, dependent on the user input, which is also an outside world value. All the other streams are based on those two or other on the, in, in the pipeline. So the arrows are the operators, like filter, map, scan, uh, sampled by, and those rectangles are the streams themselves. And uh, the right outmost uh, streams are snakes and fruits. So those are the streams that have values that are used by outside world. In the front end uh, strictly front, front end application, it's just rendering them, right? But in the multiplayer version, we'll also need to send them to the server. So yeah, snakes going multiplayer, and there will be some uh, Scala code finally <laughs> after a few minutes, right? Uh, so the requirements, very briefly, uh, we'll go through the requirements. Clients send snake. Uh, positions to the server, so each client client connects to the to the stream to the snake server, uh, and each of them are just pushing uh, the positions of the snake, and the server generates fruits based on that and scores and broadcasts all of them to the clients. So, uh, uh, as you probably know, I, I just by looking at those requirements, I can see that it can be implemented using streams very quickly. But this time we'll get. The, in the front end part, we, we had this bottom up uh, solution. Right now, I want to do it top down. So I just, ge I, I just generally create a top level flow. Uh, from the left, there are player, player states, so the name of the player and the snake positions. So this is basically what clients will send to the server. This is just one player flow. So uh, for every player in the game, we'll have a, a different instance of this flow, but the flow will be the same. Uh, and what this flow should uh, broadcast back is the game event, which will hold another player's state, uh, the fruits, of course, and the scores, because we need to render both scores and fruits. And of course, we need to render also the, the other players, right? Because it's a multiplayer game. We should see where the other players are. And uh, right in the, in the middle, there is a Scala Akka streams application that uh, we want to implement. Of course, the best solution uh, technically in order to connect front end and back end parts is WebSocket connection. So what we will do is that the client application that we just uh, we just walked through uh, will connect to the server using WebSocket, and will send players will send player states using that connection. And in the other direction will go those game events. In order to do a stream based Aka stream based WebSocket application, uh, you need to do this kind of boilerplate here. There is a helper, uh, helper function handle WebSocket messages, and here is the flow. So our streams connected to each other on the multiplayer side, which we just pass through. And this uh, flow, snake multiplayer dot flow, is this, uh, is this uh, question mark in the middle. The whole application looks like that. Client flow, this is the, 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 the front end part that we, you've already seen. The player states go there in the right direction and left uh, back to the client go uh, player states, fruits, and scores. Yeah, so fruit eaten events that we uh, implemented on the, on the front end side will just be moved in this form to the server side because the server needs to be, uh, need, needs to be aware of where the fruits are and needs to be able to generate them for all the players. And uh, but based on that, uh, each time somebody eats a, a fruit, we can create a new stream, a new stream, which will be the fruit stream that we'll output back. 
Uh, so whenever there is an eaten event, uh, the value here doesn't matter because just, it's just an event, right? So the object itself contains the information about, uh, about somebody uh, eating a, 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 an, an apple. So we just generate the random vector, which will be the next fruit. This is how it looks like in ACA stream. And uh, flow is the type from ACA stream. And uh, there are three type parameters there. The first one is just list, uh, the input, uh, input type, and this one is the output type. So uh, here we can see that this flow, fruit flow, takes a list of player positions, which is just a snake of the player, and returns a fruit position. And we are using some kind of this fruit position function in order to get the, uh, uh, from, the, from our persistence layer of, of fruits in order to get the, the position, which is not important right here. But you can use it, as you see, uh, using map async operator from ACA stream. And uh, yeah, so this is the fruits part. Let's uh, move on. Based on the same immutable stream, which is eaten events, we can also do a score update, right? We just map over with a function that always returns one, and we get a score update stream. What we can do with the score update stream is that we can, of course, scan, scan it in order to get scores for this particular player, because this is one player stream. And this is how it looks in Scala code. So again, we have a flow. This time, the input type is fruit position, and output type is int. And we, and we, yeah, we just map fruit position based on the, is it a new fruit position? Then the score, is, uh, the, update, the score update is one. And if it's a current fruit position, then the, update, the score update is zero. Then we scan over it and get the sum. So this is a score flow, very simple. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and the game logic on the server side is uh, surprisingly small, smaller than the front end part. I don't know if it's good or bad, but, but yeah, how, that, that's, that's, how it, that's how it looks like. So player states it's, are, are filtered. Then we go through scan map. The same kind of approach uh, was taken here as in front end application, even though we are on the back end side. But the same concepts are used, right? And the, the game logic flow, like the, all, the, all the flow that we want to do, this is a comment, because I don't really like the DSL of ACA stream. Um, uh, some people say that, that uh, I can get used to that. But still, I want to uh, always start with a, with a comment to the method. So this is what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to broadcast player state that we get from the front end, then may go, go, let it go through the fro fruit flow, let it go through, through the score flow, and then zip all those things in order to produce a game event, right? And this is how it looks in the code. So this is uh, basically the implementation of what I've just said, flow. Uh, the in, also, there is a flow, and player state is an input parameter. Game event is the output uh, type parameter, right? And uh, we are using a different, a different style of ACA stream uh, graph, DSL, uh, to connect all those things, outlets and inlets together, in order to produce uh, a game event zip out of it. So this is how ACA stream graph DSL looks like. So we have everything set up, I think, basically. Uh, the one thing that's left is that how should we broadcast the, our player position from this one particular uh, flow to other players' flows? Because each player has a different separate flow, right? And uh, we need to uh, somehow make all of them know about our positions. So this is where uh, this kind of merge goes in. Server app flow using ACA stream will look like that. So this is, uh, I just started from like very small building blocks, right? Just simple flows. This one takes fruit position and outputs int. This one takes uh, player states and inputs uh, game event, right? And then I can just connect them together very, very easily. So this is my application. This is the flow I was, send, uh, I was uh, passing as a parameter to the handle WebSocket messages at the beginning. So this is it. We just log everything that comes in. Then we, this is web uh, message is a web socket message. So then we just take text out of it. We parse it using uh, spray JSON, and then it goes via, via game logic flow, which we just developed. Then it goes via game event broadcast flow, which I haven't shown you, but this just, bro just broadcasts those events to other uh, players. And then uh, what we get back is the game event. So we need to. Uh, uh, 
uh, serialize it to JSON, and then map it over in order to get a WebSocket message. And that's why the flow is from WebSocket message to WebSocket message, because it goes around. Yeah, and backend in action, uh, how it looks like. So you can, uh, yeah, you can see this, this code here, 53 lines of code. I'm not, I'm not messing with you. And uh, yeah. And what we can do here, localhost, quick demo. Yeah, so this is uh, first player joint and uh, yeah, my, my snake. I'm getting uh, better at this game already. Uh, yeah, okay, and we, we can then select, uh, we can connect to the server as a player B. Yeah, and it, uh, you can see that uh, I'm just playing with myself right now, but uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, when you go to IntelliJ, you see that those, this debug which I put here uh, is working because that it's, it's just uh, showing us all messages that comes in through the flow. And uh, yeah, I basically, basically that's it. So uh, I will just, I will just skip to the slides. Links for it, I, I know the question is there, but Q&A will be like in one slide. So you can build your own snake. There's a blog post in, in JavaScript. You can, may, maybe you like it. There's a client side code server-side code, those, uh, I, I will try to tweet those guys in a minute. And uh, play, you can play with stream operators and uh, for, for example, Rx Marbles is a very, very great site to play streams with. So what it allows you to do is to, for example, for each operator, you can just play around what happens, right? So this is an input stream, I can operate uh, on the input stream and what happens here is shown. For example, sampled by, which is more uh, involved, uh, you can see what, what is really happening uh, in the output stream whenever input stream changes. So those questions about sequencing can, can, be, uh, can be very easily uh, answered by just playing with that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I used Akka streams on the, on the server side and uh, BaconJS on the front end side. Uh, yeah, that's all from my side. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and cheers. <laughs> and there's a question here. There's a question here, yeah. Um, in the flow of like, the streams you had, like the server side, uh, it looked like a graph, and then you said it was like a graph. Yes, so can you have like a stream, like a cycle in your stream, like a feedback? So the question is whether using graph DSL, whether we can have it cycles, and the answer is yes. So how do you, um, I play around with uh, Akka Streams a bit, and I know it's, uh, your graph is something static that you define, and then it gets materialized once, so you actual instantiate it once. How do you dynamically connect to it? Are you using actors as like a publish, subscribe, like message broker, what, what are you using? How do I what? So, um, you have to have your, you, you don't know your graph in advance, right? Because players can connect and go. They can come and go to your okay, so the question is uh, that those graphs are probably dynamic, but the, uh, the answer is that they are not dy dynamic. They are, they, we know at compile time how they look like. That's why I said that the one player flow is just one player flow. That there is some yeah, hackety hack trickery going on uh, so the game event broadcast flow, which I haven't shown, is, is like more, invo more involved one, which I can show you right now. But it's, it's available on the code, and I can discuss with it. But it, using, it, it uses actors on the side and materials values. So more advanced ACA streams features. Yeah. Uh, question. So it would be hard to distribute the flow across the machine. So the question is, would it be hard to distribute uh, those flows? across different machines? And the uh, answer is no, because that's the whole point. So th th just like in Akka, you are just using some kind of model, programming model that is easily uh, is, uh, parallelizable, right? Or uh, it, it, can be, it can be done on many different threads so without even changing the code. The way you define it, and then it can like, do one part of the code on one machine, another, another. 
Yeah, so that's why, that's why you, you, so it all depends on how you define your flow. For example, I use map async uh, method. And this one doesn't do the parallelization of one stage, so it, it does it as asynchronously. So you can, you, you can say which stage should be done asynchronously from, from each, uh, each another. So this is your, still your decision. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are there any more questions? No. Yeah, one more question. So with, uh, so with schemes, right, you, don't you have to deal with memory balance? Yeah, so this is the third part of the, of the presentation, which I, I didn't have time to show. So yeah, memory bounds. So the question was about, uh, should I, should I, shouldn't I be concerned about memory limitations, right? Memory limits. Uh, yes, the, the answer is I should be. And this is where reactive streams comes in, come in, okay? So there is a whole API, the whole protocol to make the asynchronous communication safe in regards to out of memory exceptions and, and such. Yep, yep, this is all posted on GitHub. Uh, I, I, do we have time for more questions? Uh, One more question, and that's all. One more question, that's all, yep. Can you uh, go back to the uh, part of your keyboard, key click stream, where you're decomposing it into left and right actions? Of course. Did I understand correctly that that's a performance benefit by paralyzing the streams? I really wasn't, I'm really not clear on what, what's the advantage of separating your left and right? It just, uh, so that it's more readable and that you can just, you know, re the key press stream can be used by, in left and right, but it can also be used in pause, reset, you know, and different stuff, but it's just one stream which you can later reuse. Because what, what I'm doing right here is just keyboard event, it can be mapped and uh, I can just have key code right there, right? Mapped to, to int and then reuse it all, all over. So yeah, it, it doesn't matter how many stages you do. So it's more about maintainability and readability of the code, right? Uh, not the performance here because they are all squeezed into one at the end. Okay, thank you very much guys, see ya.